Welcome to People Tools Tech Tips. I'm Randy Grocky. Today, we're going to talk about pivot grids inside of BI Publisher Reports. You see the pivot grid button in the BI Publisher menu in your RTF template, and it's teasing you. What's it there for? It's right next to the table menu. Is it the same thing as the table? Well, let's talk about pivot grids. Pivot grids allow us to create a table that is correct to the data set every time in every situation. At design time, we don't always know how many rows and columns a table in our BI Publish report should have. A pivot grid allows us to place a table on our BI Publish report that is data dependent. Take, for example, a tax report of all kinds of taxes. At design time, we don't know how many taxes an employee will have, and we don't know many, how many states or locality they may have paid taxes in. So we have a couple of options to create this report. One, figure out the max number of table cells that would ever be needed and fill them in as the data shows. And then we have this huge amount of table that is empty for most employees. It's very distracting. It doesn't show the data very well. However, if we use a pivot grid, the data just tells us how many rows, how many columns that data should have per each data instance. One employee may have multiple states and multiple tax classes going many rows and many columns where another employee may have one state and one or two tax classes, maybe having one or two rows and only one or two columns. Pivot grids also allow us to do some simple analytics with sums and counts inside of pivot grids with totals and subtotals to allow us to really enrich the data of our table for our user to give them a better view of that data inside of our system. Now documentation on pivot grids inside of people books is pretty much non-existence. However, Oracle has documented it in the middleware section for BI Publisher. So I've included links below and inside of People Tools Tech Tips exactly to those pages in the Oracle docs so you can create the pivot grids you need inside your RTF template. As usual, all objects used in this demonstration are available at peopletoolstechtips.com and our GitHub repository, People Tools Tech Tips. This includes all sample XML files, RTF templates, and People Tools projects. Here is a detailed report of an employee and the taxes they paid this year. The top of the page is the employee information with a table with the rows of tax detail in the middle. This is the generated report. One employee at the top with pages of tax detail. Let's look at the data driving this report. Here's our sample XML file with just one employee's data. This XML file is structured. For every row of employee data, we have one or more rows in a child structure of tax detail. In this example, we have 273 rows of tax data for this one employee. That's a lot of tax data, and this is a great example for our pivot table. Back to the report. Let's save it under a new name for our pivot table. Let's delete that table with the detail. Now let's create a pivot table in its place with all that data. First, let's go to the BI Publisher menu and bring in that sample XML file into our RTF template. Place your cursor on the page where you want the pivot table to generate, and then click the pivot table button to bring up the pivot table tool. Here's the pivot table tool dialog box. Let's take a look at the different sections. On the left is our dialog box showing the structure of our uploaded XML sample file. We see the employee data at the top, and for every employee data row, we have one or more tax detail rows. This tax detail section has the fields we want to show in our pivot table. We'll drag them over into the layout section. The layout section is where we build our pivot table. Drag fields to this left column area to define fields for your rows. Drag fields for your columns to this top control. The smaller box here is for the fields to be aggregated. In our example, that will be the tax amount. On the right is the properties section. At the top, controls whether we want a sum or a count aggregate and the numerical format for the data to display. An outline or inline which controls how the subcategories are displayed on the report. The next section shows you how to sort the columns and rows. 
and at the bottom is the total section, which allows us to finally control how we want to total our table, if at all. Let's do a simple pivot table. Drag the state desker field to the row control. For every different state value, we want a new row. Across the top, drag the desker field. This holds the description of the tax type, such as withholding or OASDI. Drag the tax curve field to our aggregate box, because this is what we want to see summarized and totaled in a report. In the properties box, we want to sum the taxes. And we want to display that number in a format with commas and decimals to help better understand larger numbers. The preview button at the top allows us to see an example of our report and make adjustments before inserting the pivot table into our report. Here's our preview. From our sample data, we have our states as rows in the table. We can see federal and New York in this example. Across the top are the different tax types for each one of those state rows. We don't know at which or how many of these at design time. There are row totals on the right, and column totals at the bottom, and a grand total in the bottom right cell. This preview is really nice in that we can change the parameters after we preview and then preview again until we get our table the way we want. Let's change the aggregate function to count instead of sum, and then change the number format to a simple integer. Click preview again. We see the new rendering of our pivot table for that data. This is nice because we don't have to go back and forth with the tool and previewing the data on the report to refine our table. We see the results in a preview before inserting it into our template. This count version may be good for an inventory widget report or something of the like. Let's go back and return the report to sum the data in a financial format. Click OK to insert the pivot table into your template. Here is our new tax report template. Let's review the report. And here is our tax report with the pivot table. It's on one page, with all this employee's taxes summarized into a simple table. We had those hundreds of rows of detail before, but now the data is much clearer. Two states as rows, federal and New York. The different tax classes across the top. There are four in this example. We can quickly see how much this employee has paid into the different taxes with the state totals on the right, the tax class totals at the bottom, and the grand total at the bottom right. With pivot tables, we can use more than one field in the row and column controls creating subtotals in a report. Let's start by deleting our current table and inserting a new pivot table. Tax type desk at the top, tax amount in the aggregate, state description on the rows. Also, drag the locality field onto the row control beneath the state description. This will give us multiple details for the states to include the locality breakdown. On the properties, we want to sum and use financial format. Let's preview this. Here's the federal tax and the total of federal taxes, which is the same thing since there are not federal localities. On the second row is New York, where it's broken down to no locality and the P0001 locality, which has only one withholding tax. Now let me show you the difference between outline and inline style with the subcategories. This is an outline style where the state has an entire row and the localities are smaller blocks within that row. Change this to inline and re-preview. Now you see the row data looking a little bit more structured, maybe less artistic. The numbers are the same. The difference really is the cell outlines defining the major and subcategories. Use whichever clarifies your data the best. Let's put this on the template. Once the table is defined and on your template, you can do all kinds of things to it. It's a basic table layout and formatting is MS Word. Change the justification. Bold headings and change the background colors. Let's go back to BI Publisher and take a look. Here's our pivot table with locations broke down by state and locality. Just to show something different, delete the table, back to the pivot table tool, state, locality, tax amount, tax type. 
get your fields wrong, just drag the field off the table and drag in what you need. Put the state desker there and then move it to the correct order. Over on the properties box, change this to count and click OK. Our pivot table is inserted into the report and we'll see the counts of the different taxes paid rather than the amount. Here are the results of the pivot table. We're not looking to some of the taxes, but the count of the tax lines for each of these. Just to show you how those totals and subtotals properties work, let's delete the table and build it again. Insert our pivot table and set it up. Quick preview. Currently, we left our totals controls on. We're getting all the totals all over the place. What if you didn't want all those totals? Turn off the row subtotal and click preview. The subtotals in the column are there, but the row subtotals in the far right are gone. Now turn off the column subtotal and click preview. The column totals within the data are now blank. To me, this looks a little cleaner and clearer than with column subtotals. Turn off the column tables and preview. Now we don't have any column totals at the bottom of the report. Let's turn on just row subtotals and totals, no column totals. The totals columns appear on the table with the row totals and subtotals. You see we have a lot of granular control with the totals as far as where and when we want the totals to be. Insert this pivot table into our report template and let's see the results. So we see a lot of summarized data here. Let's talk about grouping with pivot tables. Come back, delete this table, and insert a very simple pivot table so we can see the problems with pivot tables and grouping. There's our sample pivot table with data for just one employee. It works great. Now, go back and load up a sample data file that has multiple employees. It's the same report, it's the same structure, just more employees, more data. Pivot tables have a small problem with this and I'll show you how to correct it. Let's run this report with the new bigger data file. Wow, that really did explode. All of a sudden, this same employee has five state rows instead of two and much bigger numbers in the cells and totals. And if we look through the pages to the other employees in the report, we see that the data in their tax table is exactly the same. What is happening is that the pivot table, unless you tell it differently, will search the entire XML file for the data and jam it into every instance of the table. There are five employees in this report and it pulled all the data from all the XML file for each of those employees. We need to tell BI Publisher just to search within the grouping for the data, not the entire file. So how do we do that? Come back to our template and select the first C control in the first cell of our pivot table. Double click on that to bring up the BI Pub properties box. What you see here is the row in the structured file where the pivot table data is coming from. We need to tell BI Pub to use that X path for the data by putting a period in the path before the slash slash. We're changing it from the slash slash row to dot slash slash row. This tells BI Pub to only use the data in this X path for this group's pivot table. Click OK, and then preview the report again. Here we go. Here's the first employee, and it's the same as the previous data file. There are only two states and four tax classes. The employee on the next page has a different state and only three tax classes as columns. This is the power of the pivot table. At runtime, it's determining how many rows and columns are needed as per the data. If there were a third and fourth state, they would show here as additional rows. Scrolling through the pages, we can see how the pivot table is dynamically changing rows and columns as per that employee's data. If you chose to use unstructured data as the data source, your pivot table grouping command is a little bit different. Bring up the same control, but change the slash slash row with the current group command. Let's bring this back to PeopleSoft. Once we have our data and our report defined, there is no difference between the pivot table RTF template and any other RTF template to the application. Here's a page we used in a previous episode. It's a tax report. We created and ran the detail report, and here it is. The template with the pivot table uses the same data set. All we have to do is tell the application to use the pivot table template instead of the detail template. Run that, 
and we see our reports for the pivot table. There's no difference to PeopleSoft. So there you go. Pivot grids inside a BI Publisher RTF templates are really not all that complicated. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to our channel and we'll see you next time here on People Tools Tech Tips.